All right, so now we've seen a model in which unemployment doesn't disappear when uh, either effort goes to infinity or the working class goes to zero. So the model is consistent with queues of workers um, in bad times. Um, so the last thing we can look at is what's going to happen just in normal situation in which efforts finite, working cost is positive, like what do we learn from this, uh, from this study of the extreme case in which working cost goes to zero or effort is equal to infinity. Well, what we learned that, in fact, we'll be able to, in general, decompose unemployment in two components, the rationing part, which is a lack of job, and the frictional part, which is just the matching friction. And then we can study how these two parts evolve over the business cycle. So that's, uh, that's the last little piece of analysis that we can do. We can decompose decompose of unemployment between a frictional and rationing unemployment. So uh, let's do a graphical decomposition and let's and then let's just uh, and then let's formalize it. So, um, so graphically, let's use our labor market diagram. So here I have y-axis, x-axis, size of the labor force. Let's put the labor supply as usual. Let's have the labor demand. So let's focus on the seat, you know, if rationing unemployment is zero, so that the, if the labor demand, you know, in cut the x-axis above h, uh, should have flagged h. Yeah. So if your uh, labor demand, you know, intersect your x-axis somewhere here, here you would have no rationing unemployment, right? So that would be very interesting. Uh, so let's focus on the situation in which uh, rationing unemployment is positive. So that requires productivity to be low enough, uh, for instance, or wages to be high enough. Okay. So let's look at um, a situation with positive rationing unemployment, which would be uh, more interesting. So let's put our labor demand say here. Okay. So we know that the equilibrium is here. So in particular, we know that in equilibrium, the level of unemployment is given by this. So this is the total level of unemployment due and uh, of course, we know that here we have employment and here we have our tightness. Okay, so this is you. So how do we decompose total unemployment between frictional unemployment and rationing unemployment? So let's call UR is rationing unemployment, which is a lack of job in the economy, and UF is frictional unemployment, which is extra unemployment beside the lack of job in the economy that's caused by the matching friction. And of course we want that U is equal to UF plus UR. Okay, so we want a decomposition like this. And so how are we going to do it? Well, it's very simple. First, we look at the intercept here. Uh, so where the um, labor demand uh, cuts the x-axis. Um, 
Okay? And these quantities that we have here, the quantity, so the gap between the intercept and H, that's as we had said before, that's just the UR. So this is um, you know, the amount of workers that firms would never want to hire, irrespective of the working cost. So that's rationing unemployment. But then you can see that unemployment is bigger than this. You can see that there is an additional amount here of unemployment. Beside rationing unemployment. So you can see that in, in actuality, the tightness Tightness is higher than just zero, and so firms, they hire fewer workers than at the point in which tightness is equal to zero. Okay? And, uh, and as a result, there is more unemployment than when tightness is equal to zero or when recruiting cost is positive. And that extra unemployment is what we call frictional unemployment. So frictional unemployment is going to be here. Okay? Uh, and the sum, as you can see, the sum of frictional and rationing unemployment is exactly equal to total unemployment. Okay? And you can, you know, if you wonder like, how do exactly firms behave when recruiting costs are positive compared to recruiting costs being zero, you remember rationing unemployment is the amount of unemployment when there are no recruiting costs. Well, we can start from the intercept and then as recruiting costs go up, so tightness goes not at zero but to the equilibrium level. Firms are moving along their labor demand curve and they are actually recruiting fewer workers than if the tightness was exactly zero. So here, that point that we have here is what happens if recruiting costs are equal to zero. Either because search effort is infinite or the recruiting cost parameter is actually equal to zero. And you can see that as the recruiting costs are in fact not zero, we move from that orange dot to the blue dot, which is the equilibrium dot here. That's the equilibrium with recruiting cost positive. And as you can see, that equilibrium has less employment than the place where recruiting costs are zero on this extra loss in employment, that's frictional unemployment, okay? So rationing unemployment here, that's the amount that we have here. So this is just a lack of job in the economy. And then that extra quantity that we have here, this is frictional unemployment. That's an extra loss of jobs due to matching frictions. Okay, uh, and so that's that's frictional unemployment. And this here is rationing unemployment. 